Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to D News Plus today. I am Trace and this is episode one of three in our new series on algae. Something that you probably don't think about, but is super important. Make sure you subscribe so you get all the episodes of our series this time around. Make sure you go find us on SoundCloud and iTunes if you'd rather listen to this episode rather than, you know, watch my face, make sounds and things. But let's talk about algae. What the heck is it? Is algae the reason for life on Earth as we know it? Is it important? Is it dangerous? Is it deadly? Kind of all of these things. We're going to talk for the next 30, 40 minutes or so, split up into three episodes all about algae, and it's going to be so awesome. So let's kick into it. So you probably think that you know what algae is, right? When you think about algae in your mind, you probably are doing the same thing that I did before we started doing this research, and that's, it's that green stuff that's in the water. Algae. That's it. But it's way more than that, guys. It's way more. You see this stuff everywhere. Seaweeds, scum in ponds and in pools. Looking at you, Rio. They have large algal blooms in lakes and all over the place. But algae is actually the plural form of the word alga. You know, because we're word nerds here on D News Plus. It's not, I mean, it's kind of a fun fact, but it's cool. Algae is kind of an overarching term. It's not just one thing. It covers a ton of different organisms that are capable of producing oxygen through photosynthesis. There are actually two types of photosynthesis, oxygenetic photosynthesis and anoxygenetic photosynthesis. Algae in most plants perform the former, oxygenetic, in case you weren't listening just a second ago. But algae or alga don't really fit in with other photosynthesizing land plants, which by the way are known as embryophytes. They don't have roots, algae don't have stems, they don't have leaves, they don't have a vascular system. Algae are sometimes prokaryotic organisms. This is a blue-green algae, or cyanobacteria, essentially, which means they're very simple organisms. They have no organized DNA structure. The DNA just kind of floats around in their cytoplasm. We're gonna call these, just for our purposes, simple algae because prokaryotic is one, hard to say, and two, you're gonna forget what that means. Most algae, though, are eukaryotic organisms. They have more complex cell or cells. Their genetic material is organized into a membrane-bound nucleus or into nuclei, so we're gonna call these complex algae. Again, prokaryotic, very simple. Eukaryotic, they have DNA in one place, complex algae. As you probably know, Algae are mostly found in aquatic habitats, both freshwater and saltwater, but they also do well in a variety of different conditions in the water. Temperatures can be a huge range, oxygen or carbon dioxide rich environments or poor environments, acidity levels of water, they can do all sorts of different things in different acidities. There's also turbidity level, which is important, which is the measure of the transparency of the water from the particulates inside of it, and algae can survive in a variety of turbidity levels as well. Well, there is seaweed that lives below polar ice sheets. That's how great this stuff is. That's crazy. These bastards are adaptable. And some algae are even able to survive on land, on tree trunks or on animals' fur, in hot springs. It's crazy. And they are diverse AF. So let's start with what I mentioned earlier, the cyanobacteria, simple algae. This is the largest prokaryotic organism ranging from 0.5 to 0.6 micrometers. Watch out, mom. It's a big range. And while they are simple algae, they do resemble the complex algae in a lot of different ways, like their physiology and their ecology. Cyanobacteria only have one form of chlorophyll, but it's a combination of a couple of different types that give it that blue-green color, or green-blue color, depending on how you wanna go. But most don't grow in the absence of light. They need light in order to get energy, though some can, if they get enough glucose so they can turn it into energy, kind of like you and me. They can also, by the way, this simple algae, fix atmospheric nitrogen, meaning they can take nitrogen gas from the air and turn it into compounds that living cells can use. They're also very common in fresh water. They can survive in crazy climates, like I mentioned, hot springs, and they reproduce asexually. Although speaking of sex, I, actually I'm gonna come back to that. Just Keep that one on, on your mind. I mean, in a different way than you might already. But basically, algae can do so many different things because again, it's not just one thing. There are so many different species of these simple and complex algae. So complex algae did not come from the same common ancestor. Normal oxygenetic plants come from a single ancestor. The complex or eukaryotic algae, they didn't do that. They're what's known as polyphyletic. They came from multiple 
ancestors through a series of what's called endosymbiosis. Stay with me here. This is super cool. It's basically a symbiotic relationship where one of the organisms literally lives inside of another organism. It's symbiotic. And through a series of endosymbiotic relationships, you get different types of complex or eukaryotic algaes, things that are red, green, or brown algaes. You may have heard of red algae before. That one is pretty common in the United States. But it's really amazing that it's basically something living inside something else. Let's talk about the history of algae, though. Like, where did algae come from? 2.7 billion years ago. That's billion, with a B. It's a long time. We got something called cyanobacteria, the simple algae. Because it's 2.7 billion years ago, that makes it some of the earliest living things on our planet, or at least the very first oxygen-producing living things on our planet, and oxygen is pretty important. Then, around 1.2 billion years ago, we got red and brown algae. They took longer to form because they have that more complicated eukaryotic cellular structure. Then, 750 million years ago, we got green algae. That's the famous one, the one that you think of when you think of algae, the big slimy one that usually shows up. Green algae does way better than any of the other predecessors, any of the other types of algae, because it adapted to shallow water, and it likes lots of light. There are other things that you can probably recognize that like lots of light, because that algae eventually evolved into basically all plant life. But we're going to come back to that. We've known that there's a link between plant life on land and algae for a long time, like way before Darwin and the study of evolutionary relationships. But at the 2001 annual meeting for the American Association for the Advancement of Science, it was here in San Francisco, what, what, trip AS, a paleobotanist from Louisiana State University, Russell Chapman, and many of his colleagues claimed that today's multicellular plants, like corn and all other greenery, all evolved from a single type of algae. That's pretty huge. Basically, what Chapman is saying is that without algae, we would not have all of these plants that we have today. That's crazy huge. Of course, more research was done on this claim, and some scientists are not quite on board yet. They think maybe some life came from algae, but not all of it. But when you're thinking about it, because algae is so diverse, it's everywhere on the planet, it's not a big stretch to think that something somewhere evolved into land plants. But as long as we're thinking about crazy stuff, right? Remember when I said sex before, and I told you to keep it on the mind? Did you keep it in your brain? I hope you did. Okay, got your attention. Algae may be the reason that we have sexes to begin with. A study in PLOS Biology from 2014 found a gene that determines male or female sex in multicellular algae. And it evolved from an earlier version of the gene, which was found in a single-celled ancestor that didn't have any sexes at all. Evolutionary biologists at the Donald Danforth Plant Science Center in St. Louis looked at this and said that their findings suggest the first step in the evolution of the sexes could have started with this small change in algae. Because this single-celled organism somehow mutated to have a gene that split it into two, a male and a female type. The gene, in essence, acts like a master switch that regulates the genes associated with sex differentiation. Isn't that awesome? Algae is way cooler than you think it is. But it also could be way more dangerous than you think it is. It's toxic. It can kill you. And if it grows fast enough, it can't just kill you. It could also kill coral and fish and all sorts of things and basically everything. Maybe not everything, but a lot of stuff. So make sure you come back tomorrow so you understand all of that. But before you go, if you like to learn, and obviously you do, you're listening or watching D News Plus, you should go to the App Store and download the new free app, Science Go. I've been using it to watch episodes of Through the Wormhole with Morgan Freeman, super awesome. But you can watch all of the Science Channel shows, current, past, it's really great. And all of your other favorite shows is not just Through the Wormhole. So go check it out. There's a link down in the description. You can download the app and watch it on your phone or tablet. What do you guys think of algae? Were you not interested before and now you think it's awesome? Are you peaked? Let us know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so you get more episodes of D News Plus, and we'll see you next time.